Hello and today we continue our watch tripping journey as we had the nice opportunity of visiting Vacheron Constantin, one of the oldest Swiss watch companies still in operation. We were guided by a really passionate watchmaker and this made it that much more interesting and fun for us. So let's go and visit some of the different high-end production workshops of the brand and I say some because we couldn't see everything. So this is the 1400, our fundamental uh, timepiece at Vachon Constantin. It's a fairly slim, uh, manual wound mechanical watch. So this is the thinnest, I believe it still remains to be the, the slimmest mechanical, uh, mechanical hand wound um, movement. It's one point, if I don't get it wrong, it's 1.64 millimeters in thickness in total. The skeleton is the same and the bridges and the main plate are made of gold in this one. And the brief was, over 60 years ago, to make a watch that fits in a 20 centime coin. Wow. You know, to see that level of finishing and detail and the complexity that goes into those timepieces uh, with such a long and storied brand, it's, uh, it really opens your eyes to, you know, the ability of what watchmaking can be. Here we can have, essentially, a different look to the final product. So the case is different, we have different sizes because we have an added complication. But if we look at the movement inside, it's the same movement under the oscillating weight. And so you have an idea of components. Here we're at 300 components. Mm. That's for a perpetual. P perpetual calendar, yeah. Even the column wheel is the logo. That's it. <laughs> it's quite like change my my mind about like stereotype about virtual constantin because I think before I think I saw like okay that kind of overpriced but after I know you have to have at least 10 years of experience to build out the a tourbillon okay that's quite impressive because how many 10 years you have in your life you know to have the and then you have the chance and opportunity to build up a tourbillon yeah by one person. The tourbillon chronograph watches we assemble time adjust and encase everything ourselves mm -hmm. Instead of it being assembled, moving on to time, uh, time adjustment and then encasing, mm. we assemble, time adjust and encase. So our own watches mm. okay. from A to Z. What we have here essentially, instead of having an analog display where we have the time told by hands going over the dial, we have a digital display with um, dragging hours or a sweeping effect over the subdial. So here you can see we're freed up in the center. We don't have a hole with the hands that will be sweeping over. We can um, have, as we have here, an enamel dial, so a very lovely decoration. And um, the hour actually moves over like this. We've had a client uh, ask to make a watch in uh, a certain way, so have certain complications. This one is extremely interesting for me because it has a tourbillon. We have a minute repeater mechanism <laughs> and the power reserve indication on the back. Um, I'll let you listen to the sound of the minute repeater because I'd like you to be able to hear the difference. And you have to remember this is over 400 components. They'll wash everything, put it all back together with the right lubrification points and then they'll place the definitive dial and definitive hands. So that takes up to three months to do one watch fully. And you can compare with this one here. On this side here we have the, the gong and the hammers. So the gong is all the way around the edge. That has to be tweaked the watchmaker has to make sure it's absolutely flat and it's not touching the case or the, the movement in any way that we don't want it to. And then we can change the actual sound if it's higher or lower, we can change it with the gong. And then we have the hammers actually hitting the gong. If I don't pull long enough to the very end, it will not go. It has to be all the way to the end to make sure I have enough. So we have over 260 years of um, a continuous history but we can service every single watch. 
that's been made by Vacheron Constantin. So every watch can be fully restored um, here. So we have a record book, we have huge volumes of these books, all written by hand of every single watch that was made. You have tools from 200 years ago. From, uh, yeah, from 150 years ago that we maintain to make sure that we can keep making in the style of that time because they're really extremely precise machines. So Vacheron is such a traditional brand and um, to see the, the types of craftsmanship that goes into the guilloche and the enameling, the gem setting. Now, the first one we're going to see is guillochage. The difference between guillochage and hand engraving is that we're essentially taking metal away from an object, but the object itself is moving and the tool stays essentially in the same space. We're pushing it by hand to make sure that we have the right pressure to take the metal away, but the object itself is moving and not the tool. Whereas hand engraving, it's the craftsperson's hand that will be moving around the object to be engraved. So often we have mini sculptures in hand engraving and guillochage we work generally on the dial of the watch. For me, this is this one is the most difficult one because you need to push all the pieces same pressure. If you push push different pressure, you can see the mistake. Yeah, yeah. you see the difference. Yeah. And the light, the the way the light reflects will be different. Right. How long does it take to complete a dial from start to finish? Uh, it depends the uh, difficult uh, the pattern. Okay. It start uh, one hour, just go like uh, two weeks, no, not two weeks. The other way around, so <laughs> turn clockwise <laughs> with your left hand. You drive backwards. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was cool to get an inside look. Their watches are of course very, very elegant. And uh, yet at the same time, their uh, process is really advanced and really technological. My impression was they are awesome. They have like really, really good metier d'art department, but I, I thought that they were not so, they didn't want to show us everything. Yes, Vacheron kept a bit of mystery on the entire operation, but it was nevertheless interesting for all of us to see some of this activity going on. We, for instance, visited the Cabinetier Atelier, that's where they make exceptional bespoke timepieces, but for some quite evident reasons we couldn't film there. But that was nice. So hope you enjoyed this and see you soon for another episode. All the best and viva watchmaking. <laughs>